Greetings and salutations. My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome to Blight. To Blightfall. Yep, we're playing Minecraft. I've been thinking about it for a while. And I might figure I might as well start with my favorite mod pack of all time. Since I got burned pretty severely on my blind playthrough of Path of Logic, I figured I might as well play something I'm actually very knowledgeable about. And it's a damn fine mod pack as well. It looked like a perfect planet. Mac in the Goldilocks zone, full of minerals and... Excuse me, for a second. The uh, fucking piston noises from those do nothing machines that are that are on this ship was r really annoying me. Anyways, let's get back to it. And even complete with pre-existing plant and animal life, when the scientists at Space Command saw the scan results, their jaws hit the floor. Yes, it's Space Command, because if it was Star Command, we'd get sued by Pixar. <laughs> plans, uh, plans to make a colony ship started that day. Four years later, the starship Jaded, obviously named after the famed mod pack developer Jaded Cat, set out on her maiden journey. But now that we've arrived, it's clear that things are not as they first appeared. A seething, teeming purple biomass covers the surface, spewing forth malign alien entities that cruelly murdered the initial scouts. We aren't sure if the scans were wrong, if something happened in the few years it took to warp here, or if Space Command was just lying to us, but this is not the paradise we were promised. We're leaving the rest of the colonists in cryostasis for now, and sending you down to the surface as our last attempt before giving up and taking the jaded and her colonists back to homeworld. We've got little to offer you besides a glass bio-shelter to keep the aliens out. Resources are limited, and we're only willing to invest so much more into what will probably be a failed expedition. But if you're resourceful, and lucky, perhaps we can find a way to make this colony work after all. Good luck out there. We're all counting on you. So yeah. That's sort of the premise. We're on a... We're on a mission on this spacecraft to an alien planet. A mission teetering on the edge of complete failure. We're their last hope. But we're not going out there completely unaided. Oh no. First of all, we've got our choice, our pick of six biodomes. Or drop pods or whatever you want to call them. She'll tell you that Alpha's easiest to start out with, but she's lying. Beta is best. Uh, and here we go. And this fucking tainted pig. Every time I, I think every time I start a new world, this is already always already there. So yeah, as you can see, this is a mod pack based around the taint from Domcraft Four. You can see the tainted animal right there. Covered in fibrous growths, just like the land itself. And you may notice our render distance is very low. That is a survival strategy. The less you re your render distance is, the l the less the uh, fibrous growths can will be loaded and will be able to consume the landscape and all that. And also the less tainted animals you have to deal with. Generally, generally. So yeah. You can see the uh, quest book, the communic uh, the device for communicating with the leadership of the Jaded, and all that. Let me just do some quick tutorial quests. And yeah, 
thing. Rift position officer, Corporal Driscoll. Give you the items to help you in your mission. He's gonna save in your face. Of course, most items they request from him will reduce the mission outlook reputation. Ignore this for now. Uh, which is increased by doing quests. So it's sort of a... So you can see how it sort of, you know, will, will pan out. With the whole you know, give and take of having to do quests in order to get more, in order to make it so that they'll be willing to invest more of their resources. I don't need three beds. Nor do I need 50 million quest books. I don't know why they give you so many quest books. I'm just gonna fucking chuck them so they despawn. Yeah. I'll keep the beds though. Those could be useful. Uh, so yeah. And yeah, the supervision, the uh, supervision of the, the Jaded is one of your biggest assets in this game. But also, as you'll see, one of your, uh, one of the biggest <laughs> things hampering you. Like, yeah, as you've probably heard, the planet is mostly covered by a poisonous, hostile, purple biomass. We dropped you in one of the few spots that seems safe. I think that has something to do with that silver tree. Yeah. Got a node in there. A pure node. I said this was Blightfall. It's actually a slightly modified version of uh, Blightfall. I mean, for one thing, it's not what you'll probably be imagining if you play this a long time ago, because it's because Blightfall has actually recently been getting some actual updates for the first time in years, which is pretty big. Good old Nidmite <laughs> doing the Lord's work, the Lord being telling us. Because yeah, uh, the people, you know, Kalanos and many of the other people who made the mod pack are no longer working on it. And, and haven't been for years. Instead, the lovely people over at the Blightfall Discord server have been keeping it... have been making... Uh, actually, they've been making little uh, little bug fixes and stuff for a while now. Uh, but... The, but yeah, recently, and by recently I mean a few uh, months ago, they actually pushed out big ass update which is uh, revitalizing the community a bit not that it ever really died I've been on the Bible server and it's been pretty fucking active for as long as I've been there which has been a couple years I believe anyways we're gonna skip past these tutorials you actually, if you're min-maxing, you actually get more mission outlook by going through the tutorial. It didn't used to be that case, but since the update. But the tutorial is long. will take longer. So, fuck it. It's now, as I was saying, Executive Mandate 2625B prohibits the construction of the inferior tools you might be used to. Instead, you have to build the modular tools invented by Dr. Dio. Yes. You thought you were going to be able to create vanilla Minecraft tools. With sticks and planks. But it was me, Dio! <laughs> I'm terrible. Why do you people watch me? <laughs> so yeah. The fucking executive mandate forces you to use the uh, Tinker, Tinker's Construct tools. Like I was saying, the supervision from the Jaded is an enormous boon because of the resources you can request and all the help they provide. But you, it also means you have to play by their rules, which means you l are literally physically incapable of crafting vanilla tools. That doesn't mean you're incapable of crafting any tools that aren't Tinker's Construct, however. You'll see. Anyways, you had just enough patterns for all of these things. Put it there, because of course you can access through it through the part builder. 
All right. Now we can start making a uh, pickaxe and mattock. Only one of which I intend to use because I don't like the mattock. I mean, it's a perfectly good hoe replacement. It's perfectly good for that. It's a terrible axe or shovel replacement, which it also tries to be and fails to be. Wooden pickaxe. I mean, I prefer, I mean, to be fair, I prefer Tingo's Construct tool generally, but it still wrinkles to not have a choice, you know? Well, maybe you don't. Alright, there we go. Oh, please don't patronize me, you say. I'm already an exp expert tinkerer. That's me. I even have some level of comprehension about the way bolt crafting works, and that's like the mark of a truly superb tinkerer. Those are fucking incomprehensible. All right, if you'll sign this full, re uh, full legal release form certifying that you're completely familiar with Tinker's Construct tools, we'll give you a pass. Go make your own tools. If this scares you, you might want to back up and complete the tutorials, please, Mission of Dead. I ain't no bitch. All right. And here is this uh, book. Made by uh, Dr. Nagasawa, the geologist, where you're, mo hey, you're most likely to find certain metals. Because it does, uh, this uh, has a whole thing where, like, the, uh, this has got a you know, preset map, which I think kind of looks like a vulture, if you squint. Uh, part of a vulture, anyways. The upper, the upper part of a vulture. Uh, and each of the different, uh, Shit, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. That was a waste. <laughs> Which, uh, and each of the different, uh, biomes will have diff uh, will have different resources in them. You know that. Alright, time to make some basic flint and bone tools. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I forgot to... I forgot to actually do this quest before actually crafting the damn pickaxe. Uh, I should I should have remembered that that can cause that to not actually register. Fucking HQM. There we go. Fucking hell. Now I forget. Can I... I'm an idiot. Okay, fortunately I can craft these back into... Other things. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything to craft them into. Now that I think about it. Ah, craft. So yeah, now this opens up. Now. Here you can request stuff like being the... You can request saplings. Unfortunately, these people are morons, and somehow the saplings all got mixed up in the space, and they didn't label the damn packaging! So, all you get is random saplings. However, this is actually... These are, the saplings are actually very important. Not these, though. There's only a... Uh, most of the saplings that you'll get are... Well, just random, worthless saplings. Useful for... Aesthetics, I guess, but nothing else. However, there's a few that are crucially important. Because... This, uh, this has Iguana Tigre tweaks, which means that it's got the uh, revamped uh, mining levels and crap, which means you can't actually mine iron or with flint. See, the mining level is hard non-metal. Instead, you've got to get clever. And there's also other barriers, like how you can only, how metal, you're gonna need like a whole fucking, uh, you know, to, uh, smeltery to actually create, and you're gonna need, uh, some gold, we're gonna need gold, and the problem with that is, well, to get gold, excuse me, I'm gonna explain that in a second, why my eyes just popped out of my skull, uh, and to get go uh, and to get gold, you of course need a, p a pick of like iron, of, of iron tier or higher. But to get the metal tools, you need gold. So 
There are ways of getting around that, however. For instance, you can get past Mandate 2625B. It's like, you know, Executive Mandate 2625B only prohibits the construction of gold, iron, stone, wood, and diamond tools. Copper, and most other unconventional metals, like the alien metals native to this planet, that I'll say later, like Prometheum, can all be crafted into tools just as normal. But, there is another way. Well, there's actually a few other ways. But the easiest, the uh, easiest of these, if, you, if you're lucky, is with certain saplings. Because Natura trees, Natura and other trees, actually work with, uh, are actually different material. Their wood is a different material than, than regular wood. And actually has higher mining levels and such. And the downside is that it requires higher mining levels for most of them. But that can be gotten around by uh, just having, by going up the, t uh, maybe the tiers of all that, of the, of the uh, other trees. Also, they're just really good materials early on because you can get them, you can easily make them renewable so you don't have to worry about running out. Anyways, while I was talking to you, I just happened to get the two most important of the nether trees on like my third and fourth sapling bag that's obscenely lucky <laughs> anyways so yeah with fuse wood but yeah you uh, uh to mine fuse wood you need soft metal however and you can get that from one of the other saplings but i happen to know another way Let's go on a little road trip, shall we? Or shall I say... A water trip. Because that's one of the main things... One of the main advantages of Biodome Beta... One of the big ones... Is that it's right next to... The ocean. Now, the taint is quite dangerous. You stand on it for a bit... You just keep going around... Seems reasonable. Seems alright, and then, boom, right on schedule, taint poison. Now, taint poison is unlikely to kill you on its own. See, it's not that common that you can re usually regen as long as you keep in good food. However, it will drain your f your hunger, obviously. And that, that's important. More important than, a norm uh, than such things normally are. Because... Ooh, dark oak. Nice. Dark oak is the best oak. Best building material. Well, best wooden one. <coughs> uh, and that's important because, unfortunately, one of my... One of the most annoying things about this mod pack is that it has the spice of life. Uh, it has the spice of life mo mod. And not the carrot edition or anything like that. No. The worst edition. The one that makes it so that at all food has diminishing returns. Which means you're going to eat like a single food for like, a, a, like four or five times before it just becomes completely unviable. And, but of course, if you eat enough, it, uh, enough other foods, it'll reset. You know, if you eat enough foods to fill up your hunger bar like 20 times over... So yeah, it takes a while. So you need to like set up a whole bunch of varied foods, ridiculous number of them, just to stave off starvation. And this wouldn't be this wouldn't be so bad, however, except for the fact that this also has hunger overhaul, which means every food restores jack shit for hunger. Sorry about that. OBS crapped out on me and decided to just not record for the last few minutes. Anyways, what I was saying is, you know, due to hunger overhaul, the foods are going to be a lot less. Like, steak only was, was two and a half. I could have sworn it was less than that. Maybe I changed that, or maybe it was a change in an update? I don't remember. But the point is, the foods are a lot worse, which is, which, uh, has a sort of negative synergy with, uh, it's, the spice of life to make it even more punishing. It's so annoying that I would just remove it entirely, honestly. But fortunately, there are ways of getting around it.
yeah, the first of these, and the, the most easiest to get to in the, at the start, is emergency nutrient bars. And no, we can't make it taste any better. We tried. Yeah, supposedly dehydrated meat, but they're actually renamed Snickers bars. <laughs> Which kind of makes it sound like they're dunking on Snickers there, if you think about it. <laughs> these give as much as steak, I think, hang on. Slightly less than steak. They give a little less saturation. But more or less as much as steak. And completely immune to the effects of diminishing returns. Of course, this is only a stopgap method because they take a chunk of your mission outlook every time. But it works for now. Later, there will be some even better ways of getting around it. And really, that's sort of the character of this mod pack as a whole. Finding clever ways to get around weird restrictions. So anyways, let's go... There are some, uh, there are quite some, some villages around here that have not yet been fully consumed by the taint. Well, the, the inhabitants have been tainted and all that, but the buildings still remain. Now, you might think like, oh, with the fiber, there's no fibrous growths here under the water and everything. You might think that water is like a barrier to the taint. You would not be alone in this estimation. Great withers and scholars have made the same grave error. Deep below the seabed, there exist vast underground tunnels spanning the entire continent, spreading the taint across the isle. Okay. Now we gotta these places. These are like the last of the like these are uh, like bits of civilization that have not been fully erased by the taint because it can't uh, because it of course can't actually consume these places without someone there to chunk load it, which is why you want to be here for too long. But there are some. Uh, the inhabitants have been fully consumed by it. Kinda. But, go in here. No. Well, yes, I'll take it, but not what I'm looking for. Ah, fuck. Somewhere around here. Probably in there, yeah. And now. Yeah, where's the entrance? Here we go. There we go. Now the entrance is blocked up and the guy that was in there is gone. Okay, now we can work some magic. Ah. Uh. No! Shit! Chicken! Ooh. That was a pretty shit chicken. Ooh. Now we gotta clear out this fibrous growth so that it doesn't poison us. That could potentially kill us when we're this low. In one of these containers should be what I'm looking for. Uh, I'll take that. Where are you? Uh, no? Damn it. It's not here. Shit, where is it? In one of these buildings. I'll take sitting hand guard though. In fact, no oh, wait, shit, wrong thing. Okay, prepare it with this. Yes. Okay. Good. There we go. Free reinforce modifier on there to make it, which is basically the coming to the unbreaking. In fact, it's direct, almost directly analogous. Aside from the exact numbers. Oh, it must have been this one. Damn it. Oh, hi. Fucking. Ah. You see what I meant when I said that melee weapons aren't exactly the best? Gotta do something about that asshole. What? 
Is he gone? Where'd he go? Okay. Probably gonna be one and down here. Gonna have to do something with that. Ah, fuck! Shit! That's where he went. Uh, get somewhere without. There we go. Shit. This is some high stakes shit. Even with only a paltry bit of armor. I'm following me. That's unfortunate, actually. I was hoping to lure them this way. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot. If they don't have any targets for a while, they'll sort of pop back to where they started. That's a problem. Fortunately, while there might be one in there, I'm fairly certain there's one in there, it isn't one of the custom NPCs, which is what those are. It's actually a tainted, a regular tainted mob, which means it won't be that. Is there anything in there? Yeah, the tainted villager right there. Gotta do something about him. I can't have him a ambushing me on the ladder. Oh fuck. Speaking of ambushing. Yeah, fuck. Maybe I need to take out that archer. God damn it. Maybe if I just. Maybe if I bum rush him. Archers are mainly dangerous because of their. Well, range he would be like. Ah, fuck! Another archer. Let's try it out, shall we? Fuck. Oh no. Nah. Well, they can't really do hit and run tactics because taint heals them. It's On the plus side, this makes, uh, I guess this probably makes for a somewhat exciting first episode. I meant to just do a quick in and out. Actually, hang on. Might be down here. Hang on. Check this one out. Oh, here we go. Domium. Ooh, and some stuff. Ooh, enough for, to make a, uh, enough to make another portal. Unfortunately, nether, the nether doesn't exist in here. Well, sort of. Okay. Okay, now I need to get to the ocean. Quickly. Or they am me. Or I die of taint poison. Ah, fuck. Okay, here we go. The great escape. Woo! <sighs> Got out of here with some chess fights. Also some language... Some stuff that can be turned into language samples for a quest later. And some general stuff, but most importantly, the two Zomium Ing. <laughs> there you go. Thank goodness I have that I added a mod to this mod pack that is so that boats just drop themselves instead of breaking. Alright. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about how there are a few different ways of breaking <laughs> the progression in this one pack of the uh, mining stuff, of like getting past it, uh, getting past the what? Oh god damn it! Fucking what are the odds of a skeleton spawning in my damn biodome for the brief period of time where it could have? Whatever. Wait, a minute, it's about to be daytime anyways. Never mind. Okay, well, one of those, uh, one of those ways is of course with the, I already had one, right. it's of course with the trees, however, if you want to skip past a bit of progression with those, you can use Zomium. Zomium is pretty nice, it's a, it's a, good, it's a pretty good material, it, you can make um, uh, pickaxes with a, the mine level of hard metal and all that, and also axes. For what little matters. I know that 
But, uh, and it also gives the Domic trait, which increases the modifiers that it gets. That they get. Uh, so that's nice. But the main thing is that it does. That it can't, it can't actually, as you notice, you might notice, there's no Thaumium liquid. There's no melted Thaumium. You can't cast a Thaumium lock from a spell tree. Instead, it's crafted with the, exact, with the regular fucking patterns. See? It's very workable. I feel like I'm just hammering it into shape or something. All right. Now. With this. And a little bit more flint. Hang on. Because of course you can only replace. Uh, with Iguana Tingo Twinks you can replace tool parts. But you can only do that if the uh, tool is fully repaired. Which is why it's important that you keep this Dalmium ingot. With you, so that you can swap it out, so that you don't have to wait until you can actually produce Thaumium to actually swap it. So that takes a bit longer, finding it. So yeah, fuse wood. It's called so because it explodes. Fortunately, it doesn't actually break any blocks. Although it sometimes uh, destroys the items on the ground, I forgot about that. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, with this I can... This is also, uh, technically I could have uh, uh, gone in t directly to Bloodwood. The problem with Bloodwood is that it grows upside down. Yeah, as you can tell, because it's, the sapling is upside down. Yeah, and it's not small either. And you need to put, um, place it like 30 blocks above the ground. You need to have quite a bit of space. You need to not have it in the tainted area so that it doesn't get consumed by the taint. Yeah, it's kind of inconvenient. But, fortunately, fuse wood can, in fact, mine it. So I can swap out this. Uh, goodbye, Do uh, Dalmic Axe Head. We hardly knew ye. And it also makes for great uh, rods as well. If you know what I mean. There we go. Sizable upgrade, and all we need to do was risk our lives. <laughs> Easy. Now there's still a few other saplings that we want to get. Specifically the rubber and slime saplings, which give renewable access to things that are otherwise troublesome. So yeah. Now then, we get situated. The whole mechanic of the, uh, well, these, this, uh, scouting thing is one of the, uh, it's a pretty important quest line. It teaches you about the, uh, transporter beacon, because there's a network of places of interest, each of which they've dropped a transporter e a beacon on. And the transporter beacons are, well, these. You right-click them, and you can unlock the ability to teleport to each of them from any of them. And... Getting to each of those uh, loca those locations will net you. Where is Hang on. There we go. Ah. We'll net you mission outlook. This one only one is very easy. The big chunk of mission outlook. The rest are a bit smaller, but still. It's like one of your one of the big sources of mission outlook early on. It's why I can support myself on nothing but nutrient bars until I find another way of cheesing that Little mechanic. Yeah, unfortunately, this like uh, one of the other annoying things that the mechanic has is the underground biomes mod, which has a bunch of different types of stones purely for the purpose of annoying you. And filling up your inventory. Fortunately, you can turn them into regular cobblestone. So that saves a bit of time. But except, uh, except for the ones that drop themselves as stone rather than cobblestone. And th those you can't craft into regular stone, unfortunately, because they're evil and they hate you. But, ah, uh, well. Yeah. 
So yeah, the geologist wants you to get all these random stuff. This is also a good source of mission outlook. Getting all this stuff. And, see there's these, these six materials. Platinum, nickel, silver, lead, tin, copper. Collectively known as the tech metals. Probably because they're all added by Thermal Foundation, I assume. Or one of the Thermal series. They are very fucking rare. They're found in like all biomes, but not very rare. Really. However, if you find at least one of each of them, not an easy task, you can find ca they'll, they'll give you a location of four caches of them, which is kind of a misleading name. It's really just an area where they're, you know, reasonably common to find. <laughs> it makes it sound like there's like a whole, uh, you dig down there and there's going to be like a whole fucking cluster of blocks of that, me uh, of those metals. But no, it's not so kind. Now then, speaking of scouting, you want to see something cool that you'll probably not see in any other mo uh, in any other playthrough of this on the first uh, damn episode? Or potentially at all? Well, let's head back to the scout thing. So yeah, here's a, uh, this little trail that we need to follow. First, to the swamp. That should be around here. Yeah. There and all, uh, yeah, the, the swamp is good because it's got, it's got sugar cane, and it's got some other, it's some useful minerals, like bitumen, which you can use if you're a sorry motherfucker who, who doesn't get the rubber tree. Uh, and also, it's also the best place to find clay, which is useful if you, it, which is required for making the smeltery, of course. Which, while I have circumvented it so far, is a very, is a very important tool. Just like you, dear viewer, you are uh, the most important of tools. Uh, now then, let's go. Yeah, long story is very important for getting across these same lands. Partly because it means that you have to spend less time in the in contact with the floor, and thus you'll be. Uh, getting taint less, and also because it it consumes less of your hunger than running around everywhere does. Uh, of course, you can only start charging at the lunge. Well, you can let it go in midair, you can't actually char it, start charging it in midair. Unfortunately. Sometimes you encounter this really annoying tainted hunter, but it looks like I haven't. At least on this side of the river. You know what? I should have gone farther to the left. Whatever. Great exploration is a adventure, I suppose. Yes, yeah, see. You can see him on the mini map, see? Just barely. Oh, hi. Reg un untainted chicken. Yeah, you'll find untainted mobs in the water sometime because they won't be, you know, killed by the taint poison. Because the thing is, tainted mobs don't actually spawn. It's just that, sometime that, under that sometimes the uh, untainted ones will spawn and then get killed by the taint poison. Or, well, they'll die while under the taint poison. They don't actually have to be killed by the taint poison so long as they have it while they... While they when they die, you know? I should turn on the, uh, I should increase the render distance. Now, because lowering the render distance is important, but only if you're going to stay in one place for a bit. If you're just going around, it's actually really, it's actually a bad idea to keep it below like four or five. Might have to have you at least like five or so. Ooh. Uh, otherwise you can get uh, annoying chunk errors. Not the kind that like straight up <laughs> Delete parts of your world or anything. Ah! God damn it, it's run off again! Ah, I fucking hate boats! So much. I only use them because I hate Tink Boys and more. Anyway, here's a little. This isn't like one of the points of interest that I'll get you for the scout and all that. This is just a little Easter egg. 
Here you can find this uh, brewing stand. And you can get... Yeah, you can grab exactly four potions of night vision here. Which we are going to grab. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. Uh, now we can have to get it. Ooh. Speaking of surprise tools that will help us later. Full scribing tools. Nice. That'll save us a little bit of resources later. Hates. I hate swimming in this version of in Minecraft. It's just so damn slow. Anyways. Ah, here we have Mystical Flower. Yeah, this mod pack has Botania. But as you can probably imagine, you won't just find these Mystical Flowers hanging out in, in random locations, you know? It's a bit harder than that to get them. Instead, you've got to find them in very specific locations. And I just realized I should have grabbed one of those water breathing potions, damn it. Here we go. Very specific locations around the map. We don't actually have to find all of them. In fact, you don't even need these. You just need three very specific ones. That way you can make the jaded amaranthus. And that produces all the flowers. There's a lot of little, you know, tidbits like that. Optimizations and ways to, pr to break the progression. Well, my boat has completely abandoned me. That's unfortunate. So this may take a bit. Ah, I should have made a craft. Just made another crafting table and made another boat. Yeah, whatever. I just wish. Like, is it so much to ask that a boat just stop when you get out of it instead of flinging itself off in an op in the opposite direction that it was going? Like, come on. I hate boats so much. And <laughs> it's weird that for all of the, like, because, like, modern, uh, boats in modern versions of Minecraft are alright. They're not great, but they're much better. It's weird that in all of the versions before boats got improved in vanilla Minecraft, there have been no mods that actually pro uh, do a do, uh, do even a slight uh, even a, a little bit to improve the that the way that the you know, votes work like there's like i mean the mo uh, one mod i think it was called better boats or something like that and uh, all it does is make it so that it's so that they just drop themselves when they crash rather than breaking into a bunch of pieces which is nice don't get me wrong but it's not, it doesn't really change the, uh, issues that they, that they get, the big issues. Yeah, I added Vein Miner to this mod pack, fuck you. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that actually using the boat sucks. And there are, uh, and uh, mods that actually, like, probably, like, like, like a big change, of, they almost always just fucking add some other type of thing, like, the only the other thing that, like, adds these boats is Archimedes' ships, uh, later known as Da Vinci's vessels, which just adds an entirely different type of boat, which can potentially corrupt your world, and is really janky, but in different ways. So yeah, it's really weird. Anyways, here's the swamp. You can grab some... Each of these uh, points of interest, or most of them at the very least, have a couple of ethereal blooms. These will purify a small area of the taint. Now, ostensibly, they have a 16 by 16 radius. Well, 16 by 16 horizontally and effectively infinite vertically. 
The problem is that their horizontal radius, for some ungodly reason, is a circle. So they effectively only have a, 50, a 11 by 11 square. It's so fucking stupid. It is utterly mind-boggling. Why? Why would you ever think that's a good idea? Circles. In Minecraft. I hate it. It stinks and I hate it. Ooh. Ah. Perfect. I now have red and brown mushrooms. That's important. Mushroom soup is normally a pretty garbage food source in Minecraft. But, with the right finagling, it can be quite potent in this. Oh, hi. Oh. I was about to say, why isn't he attacking me? Yeah, the uh, tentacles are really annoying. They, uh, they do a lot of damage in melee, but they're stationary. So you wouldn't think there'd be much of an issue, except that they can also create tiny little mini tentacles. Uh, to attack you. They, and they create them right beneath your feet, so. Yeah. Annoying as fuck. Damn it, get up! There we go. Oh yeah. Jumping around the treetops like George of the Jungle. George, George, George of the Jungle, strong as he can be. Watch out for that. Something about a tree. Uh. Alright. There's the forest. It's got blueberry bushes, which are useful if you're actually bothering to deal with uh, the whole <laughs> fucking spice of life stuff on its terms. Where's the other ethereal bloom? Ah, there you are. So yeah. It doesn't have any, like, interesting ores, I don't think. Not that I can remember. But it does have a lot of trees. Which unfortunately means that if you stick around too long in it, it'll have a lot of painted goo. There's a whole thing where, like, uh... <laughs> trees and le uh, yeah, like leaves and logs and such will turn into this little, like, crusted taint. Which is annoying on its own. Is destroying the trees and all that, but it's even more annoying because it'll, it'll also it also can potentially turn into these uh, taint swarmers, which have a shit ton of health, and they constantly spawn these swarms of like basically like flying bits of taint. It's very strange and annoying. Their hitboxes are ridiculous. Like I see like screenshots of their of them with their hitboxes shown and you see like their hip a uh, fucking mile wide hitbox of which zero percent is actually covering the mo uh, the model of the taint uh, of the taint swarm it's so stupid on the plus side for tiny little bits of taint in a swarm they're surprisingly easy to hit with ranged weapons Oh, fuck. Okay, where's the... Ah, there it is. Oh. Ah, fuck. Air control. Do you know what does it mean? Oh fuck. Nope. Cut this part out. Sometimes the lunge just doesn't. You know? No, it just tra completely craps out on you. 
usually when you're like some, uh, it almost often happens when you're like lunging right up against a wall sometimes it just decides randomly to cancel the damn lunge oh look tainted woes whoa tainted woes touch me baby tainted woes no please don't touch me don't touch me, please. I cannot stand the way you tease. No, 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 no. Heck. That's extremely rare. Where is it? Okay, there you are. No, 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 no. Don't run off into the paint and get killed. Ah. You know what? I'm just gonna... Come on. No! Stay still! So I can trap you! So I can avoid you getting killed! Ah, fuck. No! Damn it. He's getting himself killed, isn't he? No! He killed the thing. Okay. You know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna leave you on your own. Hecks are quite rare. And useful, but... He's got... He's gonna... Just gonna prevent me from saving him. From getting killed up in the taint as they often do on his head be it ooh rubber sapling nice anyways I'm gonna go back to biodome beta store all this stuff and then you're gonna see something cool all right so much like the uh, ne the nether there actually there isn't an uh, the uh, the end isn't really accessible in this lot pack. The idea of it. Although, unlike the Nether, which this place just doesn't have one, uh, according to the lore, there actually is a end, but well, it's not really it's not accessible. The uh, and not some place you'd want to go. Uh, how, however, that leads to the question: if the end portal isn't in the fortress. What is there in its place? Now, normally you'd need a ender eye and such to get uh to get to it. However, I happen to have the coordinates because I've played this a whole bunch of times before. Let me just fish them out. But uh, getting an ender pro uh, an ender eye to get into it is actually not that hard once you if you uh, complete this one. Geologist quest, this one, I think. Yeah, pretty sure that's one. Uh, to get, like, you know, the vanilla materials and all that. You actually, that for some reason unlocks these quests, which allows you to, you know, get that stuff for the, uh, allows you to get them relatively cheaply, actually, from the supplier. So yeah, you can in fact get there uh, very early on, especially if you know where to find some diamonds, which I do. But this is qu even quicker. There we go. Just a hundred meters away. Forty or so will be straight down, more or less. Actually, yes, straight down. Because I uh, normally, of course, you don't want to dig straight down because you don't know what's going to be beneath you. But I do know exactly what's going to be beneath me. Mm. You hear that? That would be the silverfish. Oh, hi. That was weird. Oh yeah, they can occasionally drop nuggets and stuff like that. It's weird, uh, kind of weird that, you know, the, the, they couldn't actually get at me, but I could get at them. That's kind of unfair. 
unfortunate, unfortunately for them, I like unfair fights, provided they're in my favor. There we go. Got rid of that damn silverfish spawner. And now, in here. Ah, fuck. Here we have... Portal to the last millennium. Oh yeah. Now then, we're going to get rid of this, because I do know of at least one person who has multiple times forgotten to get rid of to get rid of the lava and dropped the damn portal right into it. It's uh, that poor bastard. And let's take the endstone too. Why not? We're ta we're taking the portal rather than just using going right through it because for some reason going back out. Uh, will send you to the specific location, which which will send... They'll simply send you back to the Jaded. And I don't want to have to go back here to grab it again. But while I'm here, I might as well grab some iron. This is actually, you know, the first time I discovered this. I wasn't actually looking... I didn't know that this was here. I just came here because I knew, hey, I got a... I can easily get an ender pearl and a... I can easily get an ender eye. From the supplier, why don't I go here? Because I because there might there's not gonna be an end, but loads of iron bars and iron doors. Sounds like a great place to go get iron. I needed quite a bit. Of, uh, I was constantly running low on iron during that during my first playthrough. What was it the second? Ah, oh, splitting hairs. Now, oh, of course, there would be a damn tentacle that spawned right there. Just my luck. Now then, fortunately, they can't actually hit you unless you're on tank. Or if you go too close to them. But that's easily avoided. There we go. Now then, let's get down to business. Defeat the Huns. Ooh, Zomium. Oh yeah, I forgot there's Zomium here. Well, I would have needed another bit of Zomium anyways. Only give me one. Wow, door to nothing. Oh, not nothing. But still a crummy door. I always love the way the stronghold generator is so strange. Baffling, even. A little bit of iron on my side. What? Doesn't make any sense. Ooh, a vista. Eh. I'll take it. Ah, here we go. Finally, torch. Yeah, uh, they can't offhand it like in later versions. Or with the one mod. Come on, what hit me? What? That's all a place with no fucking... Uh, do I take it? What? What hit me? Huh? It's spawning on things that aren't tainted! What? That's cheating! That's blatant cheating! What the fuck? Or was it cheating? Somehow spawning because of that there? 
Cause that's stupid. There we go. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. There we go. All this work for some iron bars. Yeah. All right. Fin uh, we've when I finished going through there. We've got fucking almost three and a half stacks of iron bars, a uh, little over a stack and a half of iron doors. That's one twenty-eight. That's one seventy. A shit ton. That's what it is. <laughs> it all adds up to a metric shit ton of iron. Oh, and also we got a single iron ingot. That's cute. Doesn't really- What? The fuck was that? How the- Okay, somehow I managed to- What? I can't say I've ever had experienced that bug before, but alright. I've somehow managed to flip myself into the- I- don't know enough about quantum physics to understand that. You will probably be seeing quite a lot of that in this series and in general on my channel. Not that bug specifically, just but just me finding truly bizarre bugs. You'll see what I mean. Ah, fuck. Paint just makes everything more annoying. Especially underground. Makes everything more cumbersome. It's just, it's just utterly AIDS, you know? Alright, we're back. And now I can actually... Now, after I put away this stuff, I can actually show you what's so interesting about this portal to the last minute because all right you may already know about the portal to the last millennium you know it's a whole like basically skyblock-esque alternate dimension in the void and all that you know classic for like building freely however it's a little bit different in this mod pack well technically Voila! There's some structures here. And there's someone here. Archmage Zillet. What do you have to say for yourself? Ah, that. Yeah, because obviously he's n native to this alien planet, so why would we know what his language, you know? <laughs> so that's a bit of a damper. However, what we do have in here a free infusion altar, so we don't have to bother making one ourselves, so we can get started on infusion real fucking quick. <laughs> it even has a few stabilizers. A whole bunch of researches for Thumbcraft, mostly basic shit like Niter, Elementum, Sentient Distillation, Infusion, it with one core, but also stuff like well, purity focus, ethereal bloom, silverwood potions, totems of dawn, and silverwood infusion. So yeah, all basically it gives you all the needed ne research necessary to actually start producing the stuff needed to beat back the taint, and that's good enough. That's that's already good. What's in this chest? <laughs> Six 
64 Ethereal Bloom. And four Totems of Dawn. Oh yeah! Star Wars, baby! That's enough to purify about 18,000 blocks. With conventional methods, with the leapfrog method, it can extend even farther, much farther. The thing about taint is you don't actually need to keep an ethereal bloom in an area to prevent it from being tainted. You just need to make sure that the fibrous growth can't creep back in. So what you do is you create two lines, one, uh, one in front of the other, and then you, and then once the both lines are clean of taint, you remove the inner line and make a second line outside of the outer line, and so the outer line becomes the inner line. Rinse, lather, repeat. All right. So. This seems like a good place to... Oops. I don't know when I press to do that. But anyways, this seems like a good place to stop for the day. We've got in a shit ton of, a ton of ethereal blooms. And we can get even... Uh, get like 20 or 30 more by, if I go into the other scouting locations. We've got ourselves situated with fused wood, soon to be upgraded to blood wood once we set up that. Which is why I was going for the ethereal blooms, you know, so we can get an air clear out an area for the blood wood so that we don't have to have it like right above our base. Uh, and over there is a great wood, which we've been studiously which which we should really lower the render distance so that we don't accidentally get it infested by the taint. It's great wood, quite important. And yeah. And we have a metric shit ton of iron just waiting to be melted down in the smeltery. I think like each of these uh, iron bars, yeah, eight of them means three ingots, and then each of these is six ingots. Yeah, a lot. Hang on, let me calculate that. That's about 236 iron. Oh, sorry, 237. Very important distinction. Oh, yeah. And we got plenty of clay, we can get sand, and we can easily get gravel down there. Next, uh, all right, next time, we'll do some, we'll actually put, start making our actual base, you know, start doing the renovations, make a smeltery and such, and then maybe go and do the, do some more of the scouting quests. In fact, maybe go over to that, uh, iceberg. I know there's something over here that's quite important. But, without any further ado, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.